I feel like the minute you step in there, you you change in general because you know you've come there for a purpose. And when that purpose is not being fulfilled, even to just a little bit of your expectations, your attitude changes. You're less patient. You're less understanding. You want something done. You want to be cared for. You want to be treated. Um, so you get you you have this armor on the minute you step into that environment. And when you are in that environment, it's their ball game. This is their territory now. So they've got their own stance going on. And it just feels like a little bit of a, like a war. And who's going to come out okay from this? Are you going to survive this battle? And that's a shame. I don't think like a health system should feel like that at all. But that's what it feels like. Like if they don't know that they're being... Um, sexist or homophobic or, or in any way marginalizing, the person on the receiving end really feels it. And especially because doctors are in a position of power, right? You don't want to upset your doctor <laughs> um, because you want them to want to help you. So it yeah. feels difficult to like speak up to them sometimes. I, I just want to make an observation that every time we talk about psych psychosocial support, we're talking about black and brown people. And I wonder what you all think about it. And people turned around, looked, and I was like, I'm going to get fired. I just like felt the entire time that I was trying to prove that I wasn't lying. Mm. And it wasn't, I feel so bad for people that have injuries that don't show. Like you could physically see it. You could yeah. not feel it, but you could physically see it. And they were still like just super dismissive. Like, after I give her my bodily fluids, she, like, sends it to a testing center to test it for, like, what the fuck ever she wants. Like, that was, that was the thing to me that felt like a, a real violation, you know, where it is, like, very intimate and it is very personal to, to be, like, giving a part of yourself for testing, you know? <laughs> like, you're, you're really, like, entrusting your, your healthcare providers to do the right thing with it. I have to deal with the medical system every day. As a trans person, um, I have to deal with the medical industrial complex every single day of my life. In order to get my hormones, I have to go like every other month. I have to deal with the pharmacy. I have to get my blood work done. I have to do all these things. So I have like a very strong understanding and relationship with healthcare. And each and every time I have to go, to the doctor, it's never a pleasant experience. It's always, there's always an issue. For example, uh, after I had a particular uh, surgery, this, a sexual reassignment surgery, and I was dealing with a complication, I went to the emergency room because it was getting really, really bad, and I was like screaming, crying. My surgeon, who actually did the surgery, just would not talk to me <laughs> completely. Um, and so I went to the emergency room and they kept me in the hospital for three days, I believe, pumped me full of antibiotics, things of that nature, and then came back to me and said, we don't know what's going on. We're going to let you go. And I was highly confused. You know, they was like, yeah, this, this surgery is novel. We don't understand it. I don't know what it is, so we can't help you. I literally was like poked and prodded and like over-examined by medical students like coming in like like every 10 minutes to like touch me because they had never seen a trans person. Mind you, like I had sepsis. I was in the hospitalized for three weeks. I didn't have any local, like any family or support there to take care of me. I was like vomiting and voiding out of every hole possible. And literally I should have died 